What's up, gang? It's Decipher. Glad to see you guys. Glad you're here. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being a part of the community. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, we were going to do free plug-in Friday today, um, but I ended up pushing it back one more week. We'll start those next week. Simply because I've had a lot going on. I'm finishing up an album and stuff, and um, I just really didn't have the time to find a new plug-in this week, so... We're going to do that next week, but I thought this week we'd do something a little different. I've been seeing a lot of these articles going around lately, and I thought, hey, why not bring in the video aspect, the YouTuber aspect, especially us producers and musicians. Like, This seems like kind of an important thing to do. So today we're going to do 15 albums that changed my life. We're going to go through these albums, we're going to talk about them, explain why they're you know, so important to me. Um, and I know that the articles have been 10, but man, it was hard to choose 10. So I ended up going with 15. So, so yeah, let's get into it. Also, I got something special coming for you guys at the end. So make sure you stick around for that. You don't want to miss that. And let's go. All right. So start this off. Let me introduce myself again. I'm Decipher, for anybody who didn't catch that the first time around, or didn't know it when you clicked on my name, but hey, whatever. Moving on. Um, let's talk about the very first album on this list, which is uh, David Bowie's Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars. This album literally changed my entire perspective on life in general it made me realize that you can take anything and find a story in it but you can't do that until you fully found the character that lives inside of you and we're all familiar with Bowie we're all familiar with the years of chameleon-like characters that he went through and things of that nature. They all lived inside of him. They all were part of David. And it really kind of taught me that you have to be who you are and you have to be, um, you have to be true to yourself. Like, I learned this thing one time uh, from Crowleyism where they talk about you can't make someone else happy until you have made yourself happy. And Bowie believed a lot in that. And that was one of the things he carried with him through the Ziggy Stardust and Aladdin Sane periods was that, you know, you've got to make yourself happy before you'll make anybody else happy. That was a big, that was a big thing to me. Like, that's where this album that I'm working on now, this, this new pop punk rock album is uh, coming from, is the fact that it's taking all the genres and the music that I love and converting them to my own style, but it makes me happy so therein, it makes you guys happy by hearing them, you know, because you can tell that this is obviously some kind of cathartic, therapeutic thing for me. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's just, you know, you've got to be who you are 100% to the core. Then the number two album on this list is this one, um, The Stooges. 1969 album the stooges their very first album <sighs> man this is just uh if you've never heard this album go look it up in fact pause this go look up 1969 by the stooges or really anything from the stooges i mean i want to be your dog we've all heard that a million times it was just featured in the new cruella movie um, it's, it's just an incredible album. It's kind of like, and this is one that didn't make the list entirely. It, it's kind of an honorable mention here. The Velvet Underground's the banana record. Um, there's an old saying about the Velvet Underground. While they weren't massively popular, anybody that heard that band went out and started a band. And honestly, that's, that's so true. I mean, and that's how the Stooges were. Like, the Stooges were a lot more popular, of course, but 
in that same vein, they weren't massively successful. Iggy became massively successful later. But these guys, when they, when they got together and they made this album, it was like, whoa, we can do that? Um, and you're going you're gonna to hear that a lot through this list. There's a lot of these albums that were big moments for like the, whoa, we can do that type thing. Um, the next album I've got on this list is by far and away one of my favorite all-time records ever. And I mean ever. The record is called L-A-M-F. That stands for Like a Motherfucker. And it actually comes from... The original name of the album was DTK L-A-M-F, which is uh, Down to Kill Like a Motherfucker. It's something they used to spray paint on the walls in New York and shit. And this album is by Johnny Thunders, who was most notably at that time known from being the guitar player in the New York Dolls. Um, this is his band, The Heartbreakers, which has the drummer from the Dolls that came with him. Um, Walter Luer plays guitar in this, it, in the Waldos, and there's just, the Heartbreakers themselves, man, they were such an amazing, amazing band. Um, street rock, you know, they weren't. They weren't punk by any means. They weren't like your four chord stupid songs about going to the basement and I don't want to walk around with you. And I'm not saying I hate the Ramones or anything. I'm just saying they weren't that kind of song. The Heartbreakers really strove for street rock with songs like I Can Tell, um, Blame It On Mom, Too Much Junkie Business, all these songs that were just about street life, about what it was like to be in New York in the 70s. Um, and that transitions us to our next album here, which is Transformer by Lou Reed. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about this album. I mean, first off, Walk on the Wild Side. Everybody knows that song. Um, Perfect Day. Vicious. Just Sweet Jane. I mean, there are so many songs on this album that were just incredible, incredible tracks. And yes, I know some people are out there like, well, you know, some of those were Velvet songs. I know that they were Velvet songs, but Lou wrote them and Lou felt the right to re-record some of them. And when he did, they were... Jesus, I mean... Man was a genius when it came to guitar. Sorry, I got a giant, like, moth or some kind of shit in here. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, so yeah, that was uh, Transformer, I mean, and that's just Andy's Chest. And there's so many great songs on that. If, again, it's another album that if you haven't heard, and I suggest that for all of these, if you haven't heard these albums, go look them up, man. They're amazing. Like this next one, which I actually am wearing the T-shirt for. You guys have seen these shirts Everywhere I know. Um, Joy Division, Unknown Pleasures, the first real post punk band to come along to really popularize the post punk scene. Um, man, Transmission and Disorder and just. Everybody knows Love Will Tear Us Apart. That's not on this album, actually. Um, that was, that's not even on an album. For those of you who aren't super familiar with Joy Division, but know that song. That is not on an album. It's a, it's a single. It got re-released later on the, I think it's the Submissions album, um, which was like a greatest hits. But, uh, yeah, they, <sighs> these guys created a whole style that's still out there today. I mean, you can look at any indie band from the Strokes to Phoebe Bridgers, and they're all carrying the Joy Division style with them. Um, number six is, and I'm happy to say that 
a couple of these guys are really good friends of mine. Um, I've gotten really blessed to have met them in Austin and a couple other places and gotten to know them really well. They're really good guys. Uh, the Dead Boys. Young, Loud, and Snotty, the first album by The Dead Boys. This album was somewhere kind of blending the lines between punk rock and the Johnny Thunder sound. Um, it's a very hard rock and album through most of it. It's got a couple of slower, you know, kind of down tempo, mid tempo type songs, but it really is just an upbeat groove and album with songs like Sonic Reducer, um, Down in Flames, just all this and more, all these great songs. And, and a, they were the big feature in the CBGB movie a few years back for anybody who's seen that. Um, if you haven't, again, if you haven't heard this, go, go look at this album. This album taught me so much about it's not always what you're playing or even what you're saying. Sometimes it's just about being entertaining. I mean, like, the song Down in Flames, I don't really think there's any contextual point to that. It's just a song they wrote, yet it's one of the most entertaining songs to watch them do live. You know, and it's much like the Johnny Thunders theory. Johnny always had this theory. It's not about what you play or how you play it. It's the attitude you play it with. And that was a big game changer for me, too. When these bands came along and started using that formula, that it's not about what you play, how you play. It's the attitude you play it with. It was like, whoa, wait a second. We're back to this. We can do this. We don't have to be fantastic players to make an album. All right. So that was the Dead Boys. And now we're going to move away from some of the punk roots here for a minute. And we're going to move into some of the... Uh, the otter ones here that I that have kind of shaped me into the producer and musician that I am. <sighs> Coming in at number seven, we've got Madonna. The first album, just Madonna, um, the one that had Lucky Star and Burn It Up and Borderline and just tons of hits on it again. This girl could write a hit, and for those of you who don't know. She shares a punk rock history, too. She used to be in a band called The Breakfast Club, which was her punk band in New York. She played the drums and sang a couple of songs for them. And then after that, she went on to become the Madonna that we all know and love. Um, this is a, a weird one because I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, you're a punk rocker and you know, you're all into this stuff, but then you, you mentioned Madonna. If you've never really broken down what Madonna's songs are, go look at the chords to Burn It Up. Go watch the live version of Burn It Up from the Sticky Sweet Tour. <clears throat> You'll see that this girl has brought punk rock right into pop, and that's all she did. She brought her punk rock writing style and roots right into pop music, found the best team of producers and engineers she could, and ran with it. Um, next is, oh, I love this album. God, I love this album. Rhythm Nation, Janet Jackson. And, you know, it's so funny because I was, I was a musician for a long time before I started production. And it used to be like this thing where you never mentioned that you like Janet Jackson. Like nobody wanted to hear it. Nobody wanted to talk about it, you know. They were cool with if you like Michael, but you like Janet? Oof. No, 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 no. That's not cool. And then I got into production and everybody was like, yo, you like Janet Jackson too? It was like, wait, wait, wait. This shit's cool. Okay, I dig this. Um, so that was a really big thing for me that, you know, Coming into this, it was like it was finally accepted, even though it never really made a fuck to me. Like, I was always one of these people just like, whatever, you know, I'm going to, I like what I like. If I like, if I like, a, you know, if I like an album, I like an album. Hell, I like Olivia Rodrigo's new album. I mean, some great songwriting there. Um, I'm a big fan of like Taylor Swift and Lord and St. Vincent and Phoebe Bridgers. And so I listen to really, really just off the wall styles of music. Um. 
Yeah, so Rhythm Nation was a huge album for me. I mean, and if you've never heard Rhythm Nation, or for that matter, Control, her first album, go look them up. I just, there's not enough I can say about these albums. Uh, Rhythm Nation, the polyrhythms, the styles, just, phew, Jesus. Um, and that brings us, oh, yeah, I'm going to, Oh, God. Oh, my God, this album. Marquee Moon by Television. Oh, my God. Um, <sighs> These two guys are probably the most incredible guitar players there's ever been. You know, um... And a lot of people will say, like, well, you know, this is kind of like jazz for punks. Sure, maybe it is. Um, I call it avant-garde art rock. It, it kind of a reason to be weird, I guess. Like, hey, you know, it, it showed us that, you know, not everything has to be so right on the nose. Kind of like the Velvets album did, you know. It showed us not everything has to be so right on the nose or so musically driven some things can just be noise and be interesting and uh television man these guys could write incredible hooks melody lines incredible lyrics um and the guitar playing i mean just, wow just the guitar playing the drumming everything on this album is is just totally immaculate <sighs> Uh, we're transitioning back towards some of the punk rock roots here. We've got, oh yeah, this is a good one too. Elvis Costello's This Year's Model, which is his first album with The Attractions. Just a blaster of an album. Lip Service is by far my favorite track on that. Um, you know, and when they, when they finally get the history of rock and roll right, and they, they, you know, when they write the big book of rock and roll and they finally get it all correct and it's all the way it should be, you're going to see a lot of these albums listed. You're going to see where, you know, Joy Division and this year's model and Marquee Moon really fit into play. And I know that Marquee Moon has gotten quite a bit of recognition as of late, which thankfully is a good thing. Same with Joy Division. I'm happy to see it. It's about time that these guys got their attention that they deserved. Um... You know, it's just, yeah, it, it, it's well overdue. I mean, and that, that seems to be a trend that we've followed in punk rock for way too long is, is the trend of it takes 20 years for these guys to really get their recognition. Um, kind of like this next one, even though this band is really, really big, I feel like this album is kind of just getting its recognition, and to me, this is like one of the best, easily one of their best. Uh, we're talking about more songs about buildings and food by Talking Heads. I just songs like I'm not in love with these quirky little like type licks and stuff. They really took the whole art rock thing, pushed it to another extreme, took the quirky aspects, pushed it to another extreme, and then on top of it, threw in these really simplistic little guitar hooks that guitar players wanted to play. And that's, that's a really important thing, I think, that gets overlooked now, is making hooks that guitar players want to play. Um... After that, we've got the first Blondie album with Ripper to Shreds and, oh God, I can't believe I just drew, oh, uh, X Offender was another really great song. Everybody's familiar with Parallel Lines and that's a great album, don't get me wrong, but it's the commercial pinnacle of Blondie. You want to hear Blondie in the real, the real estate, the way that I really loved Blondie, go back to this first album listen to x offender and plus it's such a cool cover it's a black cover with the five of them dressed in black and they're all lined up kind of angled backwards and 
You know what? I'm just going to put a picture of it right here. I'll let you guys see it. So, <sighs> yeah, that's just an incredible album. The guitar playing, the style. And that's one thing that's really important to me is, is the style of an album. How does the album sound contextually? <sighs> one thing I find with Parallel Lines is that when I put... When I drop the needle on Parallel Lines, I feel like there's this kind of time period it sits in because of some of the effects that were used on it things like heart of glass have that very 70s 80s kind of disco synthesizer feel um and i know that's when it came out but i'm just saying that it, it feels like it's kind of in that time where when i drop the needle on this blondie record it sounds like it could be the next paramore album or the next olivia rodrigo album or anything of the sort. It's got that sort of timeless feel to it. Um, all right. So we got three more here on the list. I'm going to go through these three kind of quick. Because there's not a whole lot to discuss about them. Other than just what they are and what they mean. Um, the first one is The Runaways. The Runaways album that had Cherry Bomb on it. This one was in a hard tie between this and actually a single by Susie Quattro called um, Wild One, which was featured in Girl Boss. It was also in Cruella as well. Because Susie Quattro really made it a possibility for these girls to exist. And at the same time, these girls made it a possibility for Susie Quattro to still so therein it creates an odd little disconnect on this one how I chose but I went ahead and chose the Runaways album because they were the first all girl band even though technically we're finding out now and there's a new documentary coming out about them Fanny was quite possibly the first all female band they were a filipino female band um this last or this one this next one we're going to is a band that i'd like to think a lot of people looked up after they watched the dirt i really would i'd like to think a lot of you guys went and looked this band up to find out who they were if you weren't already familiar with them but hanoi rocks and we're talking about specifically the first album uh, Bangkok Rock or uh, pfft, Christ Bangkok Shocks Saigon Shakes and Hanoi Rocks that's the name of the album there we go you can see how that gets a little confusing this this Okay, first off, these guys influenced every glam band that came out of the 80s. If you like Poison, Motley Crue, any of those bands, go look up Hanoi Rocks right now. Don't do anything else. Pause this. I'll wait. Okay, so, see why I told you to look them up? Yeah, that band is important, and they need way more attention, way, way more attention than what they've gotten. <sighs> Um, I really just don't even have a lot to say about it. This album kind of stands on its own and speaks for itself. If you really want to know why it's such an important album, just go listen to it. That's all I can really tell you. And before we get to the last album, let's do some honorable mentions that didn't make the list but are just as important. <sighs> Nine Inch Nails, The Downward Spiral. That album gave me this love for industrial experimentalism, creation, um, freedom of just walking around your studio, being as odd as you want to be, making whatever you want. Um, another one here that didn't make the list but is an honorable mention is For Every Man by Jackson Brown. Jackson is... A huge influence on me. For those of you guys who don't know, recently I got shared on Jackson's story on Instagram. 
um, which was a huge honor for me. I mean, this man taught me so much about songwriting and, and guitar playing and chord structuring and everything else. It's, it's insane. Um, My Chemical Romance, Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge. This is the album that... This album kind of saved my ass. I mean... High school was tough, man. Like I was into I was into punk rock and shit. I ran with like an emo crowd and stuff, but I didn't quite I didn't quite fit with them. And then when I heard this album, there was like this whole connect all of a sudden where we all got it. It was like everything that I loved, they all of a sudden understood because I mean you've got like hardcore legends on this album too. Um so this was a big album it really kind of saved my ass like i said high school was pretty tough this this kind of helped me through that period and uh i was a big fan of my chem through that they they were a huge part of my life through all of that <clears throat> um so that's our third one number four would be a little known album by a band out of Cleveland, but I suggest that everybody goes and looks this up. The album is called Heartland by Michael Stanley, the Michael Stanley band. Um, it had a number one hit, or a top 20 hit, I should say, in the song He Can't Love You, which is featured in Yumi and Dupree and a couple other movies. Um, but. This album really taught me about sensibilities, how to write <clears throat> a catchy song, how to write catchy hooks. That's a big thing I'm good at. I can write a hook before I can write a whole song. Like, I'll come up with a hook just sitting around, and the next thing you know, we've got a song built off of it because of that. So that really, I owe that to Michael. Um, he really taught me how to, how to do that, and... Uh, we recently lost Michael this year. Uh, he was a he was a dear friend to me and my whole family, and a really great dude. And we're also working on a video tribute. So if any musicians or anybody sees this and you guys are familiar with Michael, you want to be a part of it, feel free to drop a comment down there. Let me know, and I'll get you set up with an email you can send stuff to, and we'll do that. Um, so yeah, that's those four and then the last one that didn't make this list which really 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 should have made the list it was a tough one it was a tough call on this but uh social distortion the mommy's little monster album i love those guys i mean i've always said for years mike ness taught me to play guitar and he doesn't even know it my lead styles are are mike ness uh my chord structuring my rhythm styles the way that i play everything about my guitar playing is very mike ness because that's that is like my biggest influence as a guitar player i love his guitar sound i love his guitar style i love the way he plays i love the attitude he plays it with there's all these just fantastic things about what mike does with that band um and the mommy's little monster album was by far i mean the creeps mommy's little monster uh another state of mind all these great just kind of right on the edge of like hardcore and punk albums so that's our honorary mentions um and this brings us to the final song, or I'm sorry, the final album on the list. <clears throat> There's a there was a long list to choose from when it came to this album. But when it came down to it, there was only one clear choice that stood out. And it was... I know I'm killing you with the suspense, huh? Um, I 
an album called Let It Be. So yeah, this album is called Let It Be, and no, it's not the Beatles album. It's an album by The Replacements, a band out of Minnesota. Um, they were uh, a they were on SNL, they were on MTV, they were on Beavis and Butthead. They had a moment there for a while. I guess really, if anybody's gonna know an album by them, it's probably gonna be like Tim or Please to Meet Me. Um, which had the songs Alex Chilton on it, Kiss Me on the Bus, tons of stuff, tons of tons of radio-friendly kind of songs. But this album, Let It Be, was the first time that I really saw an album that came along where it was like, wait a second, there's punk on this album, but then there's like songs like I Will Dare, which are these super kind of mellow songs. Played with nice jangly guitars, real poppy. Um, you hear I Will Dare a lot in, in shopping centers, supermarkets, whatever, the mall, all kinds of shit. I guarantee you, you guys go look that one up. You're going to be like, oh, I know this. Just from the guitar lick. Um, this album is just huge. I mean, I love everything about this. Songs like Tommy got his tonsils out about the time that Tommy got Tommy Stenson got his tonsils taken out, you know, and his dentist is or his doctor's in a hurry because he's got a golf game and it's just it's it's a crazy album. It really kind of showed what the '90s was headed towards when it came to the alternative sound of how alternative might be an album that would be. A couple of rockin' tunes, a couple of, like, country-esque tunes, a couple of jangly pop tunes, and it might finish out with a punk track. So, The Replacements really kind of created that format, and if you guys haven't heard this album, I highly suggest you go check it out. Um, Alright, so that's the 15 albums that changed my life, made me the producer and musician that I am today. Now... I told you guys I had a special surprise coming for you at the end of this video, and I wasn't lying. <sighs> Number one, for all the rappers, musicians, anything like that, you guys know I make beats. All of my beats right now on the Beat Stars, there's a link down here. That all of my beats on my Beat Stars right now are giving away 60% or more to different charities and. We're doing all kinds of different aid, aid for Palestinians, medical aid, uh, feeding the hungry, save the children, just all kinds of different things. We're doing all these different charities. Every single beat is at least 60% away to a charity. Um, go donate to a good cause. Also, for the producers... If you click that same link, you will find my new drums. My new drum pack. <laughs> I don't know what the hell just went on there. Um, fifth Dimension Drum Loops. These are placement ready drum loops. You literally just have to drop these in, level them, and set it and forget it. You're done. It's that simple. They're already processed, they're EQ'd, they're ready to go. You've just got to level them to your liking, and they're set. Send them off. Send the beat off. You're done. And the last thing I want to bring up, this Wednesday, June 23rd, I'm going to drop my pre-save link down here again. My next single, Instagram Official, comes out. The album is almost finished. We're going to release this single and possibly one more. Possibly. But I want you guys to go pre-save Instagram official. I'm telling you, you're going to love this one. It's funny. It's a funny song. It's something we wrote to be kind of goofy, tongue-in-cheek. And you're going to love this one. I promise you that. So make sure you guys pre-save that. Go check it out. Also, one last thing I want to bring up before I go. If you are an artist of any kind, book writer, painter, musician, producer, filmmaker, whatever, 
I've got a new series I'm starting for YouTube called Artist on Artist. It's going to be me and another artist sitting down each week, and we'll go over a range of topics, some questions about what each one of us is doing coming up, what some of the new stuff out there is that we like, what we are influenced by, how we create our art, just different things of that nature. We're going to sit down. We're going to do this each week. We'll have a different guest, and these will be on YouTube for you guys. So if you're interested in that, hit that comment section below. Let me know what's up. We will be in touch. I'll get you on the show. We'll start this artist on artist thing. I've already got some people lined up to do these, so start looking for these probably like sometime next week. So, all right, guys, as always, I'm Decipher. It's your world. Pay attention. Take care of yourselves. And I love you guys. I will see you next time. Also, Make sure you subscribe, hit that bell, drop a like if you like this, and go check out those albums. I'll see you guys next time.